there has been a very rapid shift in therapies for CLL currently. Um, there have been many new approvals, so BTK inhibitors, which now include abrutinib as well as acalabrutinib, have both uh, been approved in frontline and relapsed, uh, plus or minus a, monoclonal, a CD20 monoclonal antibody. Uh, Xanabrutinib is not yet approved for CLL, that's another BTK inhibitor, but just recently got approved uh, for uh, mantle cell lymphoma, so stay tuned. There's lots of data um, in CLL as well, so that, that, you know, we're awaiting the approval of Xanabrutinib in CLL. And then, of course, er, you know, recently we have the Venetoclax BCL2 inhibitor in combination with Obinutuzumab, and that's also now approved in frontline. So there are many options for our patients with chronic lipidic leukemia in the untreated patients setting, so frontline therapy, different options to discuss with them. Um, and then a relapse setting, um, of course, there are more therapies, including PI3 kinase inhibitors as well, that are approved in the relapse setting. And so patients have multiple options of different therapies. And, and in the relapse setting, of course, part of that will be dependent upon therapies they might have gotten in frontline, um, did they have any toxicities to those therapies? What is their disease characteristics now? So there are different things that we can talk about that play into how we choose now these multiple therapeutic options that we have for our CLL patients. You know, the survival for CLL, given these novel agents, has dramatically improved. And I think that's an important point for patients to um, take home, that, that really these novel agents have drastically improved the survival for patients with CLL. And of course, there are still some important things to consider um, when we look at patients for treatment. And of course, their prognostic markers, including their cytogenetics and FISH, will help you know, help guide you for selecting therapy, of course, but also, um, you know, there are differences in uh, their prognosis based on some of their features. Um, the IGHV mutational status is also an important feature that we check on patients. And I think the, the reason why, you know, we um, uh, consider these factors important is because I think selection of therapies is really um, based on some of these, on some of these markers. So if somebody has a 17P or a P53, mutation, for sure, you're going to go to a novel agent. Um, and that is very important. Now, thankfully, the survival of those individuals has dramatically improved as well uh, compared to the era of chemoimmunotherapy. So all would agree that for patients with a 17P or a P53 abnormality, that these are patients who should receive a novel agent. Our longest data happens to be with BTK inhibitors in the subgroup, but certainly there is data for venetoclax-based combinations as well uh, in this poor prognostic, uh, poor prognostic group of patients. So certainly, we, you know, that's an important uh, factor to know about prior to treating your patient because you would select and say chemoimmunotherapy is not an option here or chemoimmunotherapy alone meaning if you're, you're, up, you're on a clinical trial that combines chemoimmunotherapy plus a novel agent that would be fine but it has to be a novel agent for patients with that feature also when we look at unmutated patients certainly we're going to move away from chemoimmunotherapy for unmutated folks as well so again checking the mutational status is important and knowing that um, because then you might say decide to say we're not doing chemoimmunotherapy. And remember, some of our patients who may un otherwise seemingly um, have what we think is a good prognostic marker, a 13Q deletion, if they are unmutated, we would not give them chemoimmunotherapy. So we would, again, put those folks to a novel agent or novel agent plus. Um, and so I think prognostic markers are still very important to obtain in our patients. Remember, patients can change their chromosomal abnormalities if they've had therapy already in frontline, you're going to want to check them again prior to their next subsequent therapy. Because if they now acquire 17P or P53, again, that would be important to note. So I think that prognostic markers are important um, and we need to utilize them to A, learn more, particularly as we have, knowing that patients have done so much better and patients that we otherwise, let's say 11Q deletion, unmutated patients, now in the era of these novel agents, their survival has improved dramatically um, and now are akin to better players. Um, and so that's important. So getting this data is important, but also it helps us select um, therapies for our patients given the multiple therapies that we now have for our CLL patients.